all. That doesn't quite work. Maybe, maybe that goes there? Hmm, that looks... Oh, uh, didn't see you all there. Customers. Uh, I assume you're here to see the newly buffed IDs. Well, you see here at Esku's workshop, we take in broken and disheveled IDs and give them a new coat of paint. You might have seen my other video covering some of those unfortunate IDs, so I got to thinking, if I could, how would I buff those IDs to make them more fun and usable? So I kicked out the old owners of this place, they turn into books, weirdly enough, don't know what's up with that, and now I do just that. Buff those real bad IDs and turn them into something a lot more interesting. Well, if you're interested in seeing the new products, I just finished up three fixer-uppers. Don't worry, I'll give you the rundown of what exactly I buffed about them and why. We are looking for new employees here at Esku's workshop. Maybe you too can become a grade one fixer like me by looking at my work. Before I tell you about how I buff the IDs here, let me tell you about the guidelines I have to follow from corporate. They are a pain, but the higher-ups pay my bills, so I follow these three rules when buffing IDs. Number one, I cannot add any coins to skills. This is rough for some IDs, I admit, but it's reasonable. If I want these buffs to be at all plausible, I can't be asking Project Moon to make new animations. Number two, the core and role of the ID must remain to some degree. For example, if I were buffing an ID like Blade Lineage Otis, I would not be able to make her a Bleed and Paralyze ID. I also cannot adjust base stats, meaning offense level, defense levels, speed, and health must all stay the same. Number three, these IDs cannot be blatantly overpowered. I could very easily take Mariachi Sinclair and make Panyata Party have a floor of 17 and a ceiling of 52. That's no fun though. These buffs are meant to leave the IDs in a much better spot, not necessarily topping the tier lists. But those are all the rules. It's worth mentioning though, the main goal here is to make these IDs fun. That's not to say they are not fun in their current state, but if one of these buffs comes out as a boring number increase that doesn't sound at all interesting to give a test drive, I haven't done my job very well. Classic disclaimer, I buff all IDs based on their uptime floor state, yada yada. For this video, and I plan to do more of these, I'll be showing you the buffs I propose for Spy Sinclair, Chef Gregor, and LCCB Rodian. So grease your elbows and butter your eyes, because this is going to get really nerdy and game design e. Let's start with Spy Sinclair. And while this is the third time Spy Sinclair has been brought up on this channel, I promise this time I won't relentlessly bully him. But instead, I'll be lifting him up. Since this is the first buff I'll be showing you, I'll take this slower than the other two. Let's first look at the core mechanics that Spy Sinclair has. Aggro, Protection, and Tremor. These are pretty simple mechanics, so while it may seem we are completely limited in what we can work with, that just means we have to get a bit more creative with the changes. Since he's a tank, we want to retain that as the core of his kit, like I mentioned in Rule 2. We also want to help out his usage of Tremor slightly, since even though he is the only Spy to inflict Tremor, it is undeniably central to his kit. In addition, the Spy do center around being their client's shield, so let's see if we can enhance that aspect of him. Let's start by adjusting this skill 1. I don't hate the current version of this skill, but it can surely be a little bit better. Let's start by giving this 3 aggro on use. There's really no reason this skill in particular should not have aggro. I know most tanks have at least one skill that doesn't have aggro, but the skill 1 is the most common skill, so not having it here is especially unfortunate. I'll also bump up the base power by 1, making this roll an 11 total. Then lastly, on hit with this skill, Zvi Sinclair will gain 1 protection next turn. This is in order to allow him to stack protection easier, and will come into play later in the kit. His skill 2 on the other hand is a bit more complicated to buff. This skill clearly rolls far too low, and damage down is a bit of a weird effect, though it works as a pseudo protection. It's also his only skill without protection, so let's rectify all of these problems. I'll buff the coin power of this skill to plus 4, and lower the floor by 1. This puts him in line with other 2 star IDs by letting him roll a 13. Next, we'll move his tremor from his second coin to his first coin, then make his second coin also inflict 2 tremor count, as well as add 1 offense level down next turn to his second coin. Lastly, his clash lose effect will be replaced with giving him 1 protection instead of 6 tremor. Now that's a lot of changes, so let me explain why I made each one. The coin power buff is actually pretty self-explanatory, I think, but the reason I didn't have the skill roll 14 is simply because I didn't want it to feel too similar to Zvi Rodian's skill 2. Her skill is more offense-oriented, whereas this skill has a bit more utility now, so it rolls a bit lower to compensate. Moving the tremor to the first coin actually has a very specific purpose. It makes it so if you hit an enemy with no tremor on them at first, you would apply 6 tremor and 1 count, since any amount of potency always gives 1 count, so long as they had none to begin with. 
Then on the second coin, which inflicts two count, you would then have six tremor and three count, essentially giving you one count for free. Project Moon often seems to actively avoid doing this on some skills, so I figured I would do Svi Sinclair a solid and actually make his tremor application respectable. We also want to make him self-sufficient for his burst tremor condition on the skill 3. That little bit of offense level down on his second coin is just to make clashing very slightly easier sometimes, plus it's a debuff I want to see more of overall, so adding a little bit here to Svi Sinclair both makes sense and allows him to fit into a debuffing composition pretty well. Then lastly, that Clash lose protection is just to make his game plan a bit clearer. In case you don't quite understand, let's take a look at this last skill, which wraps it all together. Strong Strike is actually pretty alright as it is, but we are going to make this Tremor Burst reward far more interesting. But first, let's just increase the coin power by 2 to make this an even stronger strike. Then, instead of gaining 2 protection next turn from Bursting Tremor with 5 plus potency, Svi Sinclair will gain a permanent protection for the rest of the battle to a maximum of 2. The design idea here should be pretty clear. I think regular old protection stacking is kind of boring and also finicky, but a permanent protection actually sounds like an interesting way to solidify Svi Sinclair's niche. Obviously, I'll also be making that Blunt Fragility apply next turn, however, I'll be lowering the potency to 1, since 2 fragile next turn on a tank like Svi Sinclair doesn't really make sense. So while this may seem like a nerf, it is definitely still a buff, since that Blunt Fragility was doing next to nothing before. Then his passive. I've mentioned my problems with this passive in the past, so let's just change this pesky adjacent allies nonsense and make this consistent, reliable protection while also being reasonable. This will now be 3 Gloom Resonance instead of 2, and apply 1 protection to the 2 lowest HP allies. This increases the viability of this passive by… quite a lot, honestly. However, I think this fits the passive's name pretty well, being your shield. It means that Zvi Sinclair can now properly protect the lowest HP allies on the field, if only by a little, which is far better than the absolute RNG fest that it was before. I did remove the defense power-up from the skill, but I think it's a fair drawback. And realistically, the defense power-up was only especially good with someone like Suncliffe. His guard and support passive seem fine enough to me, so here's what all the changes look like altogether. I think these buffs make Sinclair's kit make a lot more sense in my opinion especially since that Clash Lose Tremor is gone on the skill too. You can now rely on Spy Sinclair to consistently tank hits if he does lose a Clash. However, if you do win a Clash with his skill 1, you are rewarded for being tankier next turn, in case you lose a Clash in the future. Protection stacking is a dangerous slope, especially if you do solo runs, so I will tentatively add an always active clause onto his passive. Spy Sinclair can have no more than 7 protection from his skills at a time, this is kind of an anti-fun design choice, but 7 protection is enough to where I think it is still fun and also balanced. Especially because of those permanent protections. During the making of this buff, I struggled to think of something unique that Svi Sinclair could have, and so permanent protection was born. I think with these adjustments, Svi Sinclair becomes a solid protection tank while also having numbers that are no longer completely laughable. However, the best part about making these theoretical buffs is that there are a lot of directions you can take it. And I think there are a lot of ways one could buff Svi Sinclair. If any of you have any ideas on how to buff the IDs I mentioned in this video, or any IDs really, I'd love to read about it in the comments section. I would recommend you follow the same three rules that I do though, needing to be creative with your buffs makes the process more fun in my opinion. A prime example of needing to get creative, Chef Gregor. This ID had so much potential to be interesting, but he's just not there in his current state. I had a few ideas for this buff. The first iterations were focused on bringing out his healing, but G Corp Gregor exists, so I wanted to have him fill an entirely different role. So ultimately I decided to lean more into the idea of bloodlust. Since Chef Gregor is the one who hunts down the ingredients in that mirror world, having him be better when the opponent is bleeding, as well as just having more bleed potency in his kit, made sense to focus on here. We'll actually start with his guard, since I want to do something kind of fancy here. I'll be adding an effect to this guard. On use, increase healing from the Pact Pies passive from 8 to 10. To be honest, I just like this from a flavor perspective, no pun intended, but Gregor just takes a break to chow down and I think that's a fun, small buff. Now let's get back in order. So I have some gripes about this skill. The plus 30% damage condition triggers when the target has 4 plus bind, but Gregor cannot reach that much bind on his own with his current kit, and bind synergy is relatively rare. 
So instead, we'll be removing that entirely and changing it to on use. If the target has 5 plus bleed, use coin 2 an additional time. This is a pretty drastic change, and you could make a case that this goes against the rules for changing the core of an ID, but he is focused on bleed. For some reason, they just made the skill not focused on it, and I didn't like that. Making this skill reuse a coin fixes his below average clashing when the condition is fulfilled. Since this is on use, it would clash like Shi Ishmael's flashing strike. We'll be changing this skill similarly to how I suggested in my worst ID in Limbus Company video, which will make this coin power condition happen when you are faster than the opponent to a max of 3, so every speed point of difference is plus 1 coin power. I'll also add on a smaller stipulation, since I removed the bind synergy on the first skill, the coin power can go to a max of plus 4 when the opponent has bind on them. To be honest, I don't like keeping this skill at a 14 base, but with this new change it is pretty likely you will gain some coin power anyways, since a lot of enemies have relatively slow speed ranges. Well, this is the skill that forced me to make an apology video, so I have an obligation to fix this skill properly. The condition to gain plus one coin power isn't as harsh as what the game would lead you to believe, but this is still a really bad skill. Why? Base Merceau had his 4-8 skill buffed to a 4-12, but Chef Gregor has to stay at a 5-9. Relying on a condition to become average or slightly above average sucks, so I don't think so. I'm buffing the coin power by 1, but lowering the base power by 1 as well, making this roll a 12 total. This is completely average for a 4 coin skill on a 2 star, so there is plenty of precedence that justifies this number. However, that's not all we can do here. These effects? Uh, they are really bad. So let's just do a complete readjustment. The first coin will inflict 2 bind next turn. The second coin will inflict 2 paralyze. The third coin will inflict 5 bleed, which seems like a massive buff, and it kind of is, but bleed potency doesn't really exist outside of Kurukumo Hong Lu, and that's... well, that should be obvious why that's bad. And I wanted for him to have a way to trigger the condition for his skill 1 outside of team synergy, even though it is only on his skill 3. The last coin would then inflict plus 1 bleed count, and then heal by 33% of damage dealt. In total, after this attack, the opponent would have 2 bind next turn, 2 paralyze, and 5 bleed potency with 2 count. The idea here behind the buff was the 4 steps of cooking put into one skill. Number 1, restrain it. 2, sedate it. 3, chop it up. And then 4, enjoy. This design philosophy was present in the original skills debuffs, but it was hidden behind bad numbers and values, so all I've done is bring up the flavor. We won't touch his passive or support passive, so that's everything. Plain and simple, this buff should be in the game. I mean, come on. Even if this buff Chef Gregor is not winning any rewards for best ID, or even best 2-star ID, I think this buff would make him far more enticing to play as. Personally, I really like the idea of reusing a coin on a skill 1, or even just more reuses in general. We only have Kurakuma Honglu, Ting Tang Honglu, Shi Ishmael, and Rose Spanner Rodian reusing coins. Most importantly, I think this buff showcases that below all the bad numbers and bad potencies, Chef Gregor has solid core mechanics. If only Project Moon hadn't snubbed him of the numbers he deserves. Now an ID that lacks those solid core mechanics, LCCB Rodian. Despite this being the best of the bad IDs, her kit is very bare bones, which makes it hard to tell what this ID even wants to be. Her kit has Paralyze, Defense Power Down, and Defense Level Down. The hardest thing is that Defense Power Down is just really, really bad. So while I will be keeping it in her kit, it is hard to justify increasing the application of it at all. So instead, I will be enhancing her damage while mostly leaving her actually good debuffs the same. We really want to lean into the concept of the before team, rewarding Rodian for being the first to the target, while also enhancing her general strength. Her skill 1 is actually her most comprehensive skill. The numbers aren't too low, and I don't hate the blunt condition for buffing this to a 13 rolling skill 1. She has maximum offense level 2, so this is actually an alright skill. I'll make one small adjustment, adding a condition that states if the target took no damage from attacks this turn, deal plus 30% damage. This will become a through line for the rest of her kit. In exchange, the paralyze amount will be reduced to 2 from 3, but I'll explain why when I talk about the skill 2. So thrust is a skill that is still terrible if you don't have a blunt skill lined up. The reward is only a 12 roll 2. The on hit effect is also really not anything special. So we are going to completely overhaul this skill. Firstly, the base coin power is going from plus 1 to plus 3, and the blunt condition coin power will be reduced to plus 1. I went back and forth on letting this skill roll a 16, but ultimately I decided that was a little bit too powerful for a 2 coin skill too, even one that has a condition to roll it. 
This means it now rolls a 12 normally and a 14 with the condition fulfilled. But that's not all. We'll be adding a similar condition as a skill 1, this time if the target took no damage from attacks this turn, deal to plus 20% damage. Lastly, we'll move the 4 defense power down from her second coin to her first coin and make the second coin have the condition on hit, gain 2 haste next turn. I tried really hard to think of any other way this ID could work without haste, but I had to add it. It's super strange that she would have no instance of it when wanting to get to the enemy first is the whole idea of the ID. Again, you could argue this is against the core of the ID, but I would say that this is actually completely in line with what the ID should have been. This is also why I reduced the Paralyze on the skill 1, since an ID with 3 Paralyze on their skill 1 going super fast could end up invalidating a lot of coins, so 2 Paralyze sounds like a fair compromise. Anyways, next is the skill 3. Suppress. You know, I never noticed that LCCB Rodian and LCCB Ishmael had the same skill 3 name. You know why? It's cause no one really cares about LCCB Rodian. Regardless, this skill looks fine on paper, especially with the haste buffs on her skill 2. So we won't be changing too much here, except redistributing some power. Suppress will gain a base power, increasing it to 8, and we'll be moving a coin power from the first to hit the target condition into the base coin power, making this roll a 14 naturally. Now, we'll change the first to hit the target condition from plus 2 coin power to plus 20% more damage. Then we will add in that same mechanic from our skill 1 and 2 of gaining coin power if the next skill is blunt, in this case plus 2 coin power. This means with the condition she rolls an 18. Lastly, we'll add on hit, gain 2 haste next turn to her first coin. This allows her to have speed control on half her skills, meaning she should be going fast the majority of the time in combat. While all these number increases may seem like overkill, I need you to understand something. This ID has plus 5 offense level, meaning she has the same offense level as Rabbit Heathcliff, G. Gregor, Enclair's skill 3, and Warp Ryoshu. She was clearly, at some point, designed to be a glass cannon, as evidenced by her health. Something must have gone wrong along the way, considering what we ended up with. However, we aren't quite done. I would want to change her guard into an evade, but that would be changing a core part of the ID, so this will remain unchanged, though I really do think an evade makes more sense. Her passive, however, I will be making some adjustments to. Let's be honest, you are almost never fulfilling both these conditions needed for her passive, those being the three envy resonance and an enemy using a defense skill, also only 10% is pretty insulting. So I'll be making this 2 Envy Resonance and plus 20% damage. This is still not a very good passive, but it means it's actually somewhat practical if the enemy does use defense skills. I'll leave her support passive untouched, it's acceptable as it is. I think this buff would make LCC Rodian actually feel like an instigator, since with 2 haste she can actually move pretty fast. A 5-9 speed range helps a lot in making sure she hits those extra damage conditions and can actually make use of her respectable amount of Paralyze. Defense Power Down is just an incredibly unfortunate status to be focused around. I'm not going to go full rant mode, but I don't hear people really talk about this, probably because Defense Power Down as a status is only really on LCCB Rodian. Her defense level downs are applied on the same turn. This means that against an enemy with an evader guard skill, she needs to go first and have someone else hit the enemy after her to redirect the guard or evade. Hitting the enemy with a skill that lowers the defense power after they already use the defense skill is pretty laughable, and doesn't work. However, it does work well against counters since they are affected by defense power down. 4 defense power down is the same as 4 attack power down there. Changing this to have defense power down apply next turn doesn't really make much sense either, since you usually have no way of knowing if the enemy will use a defense skill next turn. Theoretically, this debuff can become more viable in the future, but I really don't have high hopes. I do like what I did with this buff overall, it's less interesting than the other two, but I think it's the one that still allows LCCB Rodian her unique mechanic of gaining coin power on blunt teams, and actually fully leans into the flavor that comes with being on the before team. There was some debate on whether to make her further focused on punishing enemies who use defensive skills, making her very niche but very strong in that one niche. Personally though, I would rather have her be viable anywhere, but especially good against defensive enemies, and I think I have done that here. And there we go. Another hard day's work, and three more IDs saved from the bottom of tier lists. It's rewarding work, but it's also a little upsetting since there's almost no real point to theorizing about these buffs. Sure, up to 5 might exist in the future, but I wouldn't want these to be locked behind a ton of resource grinding. I understand Limbus Company is a gacha game, but they buffed Spy Rodian and Sunshower Heathcliff in the past, and buffing an ID is really not that hard, especially ones as bad as these, so maybe? So is there any particularly profound point I want to make? No. 
not really. This video is mostly a way for me to air my thoughts on these IDs, since I have a lot of thoughts about this game in general and what can be improved or done about it. I'm not a game designer, but I do think these changes are well thought out and relatively balanced, though they are definitely skewed to the more powerful side of two-star IDs, which I think is fine. I would rather make buffs that actually shake things up than small adjustments that barely do anything but are still buffs by definition. Not calling out anything in particular, just to, you know, spitballing. Anyways, I gotta close up shop for the night. Thanks for stopping by. Maybe you can swing by again and I can show you some more of what I got in store. Literally. For now, I'll see you later. And always remember the motto of Eskew's workshop, this maintenance ends now.